Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Coach Irma, your personal coach. Um, I call myself your personal coach because I am here to help you, give you the tools to think, um, to trigger your thinking into different subjects, to coach yourself. Um, because Sometimes we have to self-examine. The information that I'm giving you, you may not hear it. You may hear it many times before. You may even, people tell you these things all the time. However, sometimes somebody might say something, you don't get it, and then I say it in a different way, and then you get it. So my job here as your personal coach is to help you self-coach yourself to be better, to know better, to grow better, so that you can do better. Without having all the outside forces, um, judging and um, people giving you their opinion, sometimes we have to go with sin and fix what need, what's broken and fix what needs to be fixed. Sometimes it's not even what's broken or what needs to be fixed. Sometimes we have to encourage our own selves because nobody can do this better than us. So this is the reason why I come on here and just talk about different things. Sometimes I would have a conversation with somebody that I'm like, hmm, this conversation can help a lot of people. Sometimes you may not even be thinking of your situation until somebody says something and then you like, I've been there. I've done that. This information can be helpful to people. So I am here to help you self-coach yourself by asking you or talking about the different subjects that might affect you. If anything, let's just have a conversation for the sake of conversation. It's, there's no, nothing deep in it. We're just going to talk as women. Okay, today is the last Sunday of the Love Month series. Um, I have to say it was, it's been a beautiful month, full of love, full of care. I spent a lot of time talking to my loved ones that are far away from me, checking in, just talking to them to check how they're doing. I have a cousin who's going through breast cancer, so I have, she kind of expects, um, when her phone rings this morning, she says, oh, I know it's Irma Joseph calling her. Because every Sunday I would take the time and check in and see how she's doing. Um, these are the type of love that we sometimes take for granted. We take this, these types of love for granted um, by, by not categorizing them as the love zone. What I mean by that, again, Valentine's Day, February is the love month. We, people are sad. Some people get very sad and very lonely around this time because they think, the, the ultimate love is between them and a the partner. But it's the love that you receive from every different angle, from everybody, friends, cousins, brothers and sisters, parents. All this love is all around us. We really need to tap into them and really elevate them and cherish them. Having said that, um, I believe there's no accident um, in anything in life. The people we meet, we are met to meet, to teach us a lesson, to help us to work through an empath, through, to, to, to just be in our life to serve their purpose, and vice versa. We serve a purpose in their lives, and they, they serve a purpose on our lives. So we shouldn't take our human connection for granted. No encounter 
uh, accident. I believe they are all divine and they happen in divine order. Um, having said that, I could not not put the the spotlight on black love. Of course, I am black. Um, and I know and understand the black love of black people, the love between black people. Imagine we were people that weren't allowed to be married. We weren't allowed. This is why it's not an, it's not a, 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 a lot of things that we weren't allowed to do. We should just do just because we can do it. That's the that's one way of honoring our ancestors. Um, we weren't allowed to be in love. We weren't they they back in the day when the husband they would first of all the masters would break the families by taking the husband or killing the husband. Let's start there. So black love there's so much trauma in our community there's so many people that are walking around with trauma carrying burden of trauma the other day somebody put on put a post on facebook it said um you don't know how broken someone is until you you try to love them it resonates with me because I can, myself, I remember how I could sabotage a relationship. I really can sabotage a relationship, okay? Um, my husband now used to remind me, okay, you, you can be mad, you can go up and down, I'm here to stay. That's a blessing. He's going to love me through my hurt. He's going to love me through my unworthiness. Black, com the black community has so much trauma. We cannot take our love for granted. Um, an older woman Haitian woman takes care of their man honey um, they would get up in the middle uh, four or five o'clock in the morning my aunt especially my husband always referred to her my Mary my aunt says um, she would get up at four o'clock and cook a full meal because she'll be going to work and may not even she worked 10 12 hour days as a nurse she may not even be back home for dinner so she wants to make sure her family has a meal every day so my husband would say if I don't get up to big breakfast he's like I'm gonna call my Timari because I know she raised you and you should know better that you need to take care of your man I'm like whatever go ahead and call my Timari <laughs> um, to come cook you breakfast whatever and of course, I get up and cook the breakfast because I don't want to hear it. However, I say that to say, um, an older woman told me one time, I said, why do you, if, if we had a barbecue, we, everybody's sitting around and we're having a good time talking, and her husband shows up and she gets up and go make her plate. I said, why can't you just relax? He can make his own plate. In my you know my modern wifey attitude she looked at me she said you don't know you don't know because if you knew you would jump up and go make your husband a plate and I've made my husband a plate before but I don't make it he's here let me go make a plate having said that she said to me and then she fixed the husband's plate and came back to us and said, let me tell you something, young men. You see these black men that are here with us, carrying the load? You see them? When they go out there, 
the world beat them up. The world beat them up and tell them they, they less than a man. The world challenged them on every level. Their mere presence intimidates people. When you have a big black man showing up somewhere, they don't have to say anything or do anything. The, the, the intimidation is there. The, the, the fear is there. That's when people have prejudices against others. It's because they're scared they don't know what that person is about. So, if the world is beating them up, somebody at home needs to be picking them up. All the young men that were making fun of the process, we just shut up. We just shut up. We think black women has it tough. You think black women, when somebody is emasculating a man, this is why when we fight with our loved ones, we shouldn't, it's not tit for tat. You still can fight and disagree with someone without um, calling names, degrading names. I'm angry with you, but that doesn't mean you, 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 you know, word things people call people, tell couples of, you know, women are telling, shut up, shut up. You don't fight like that. That's immature. Because even when you're angry with each other, you should be thinking about the person's value. It's easier said than done. Because when somebody does something to you to hurt you, your first reaction is to hit back. You want to hurt that person back. But I'm here to tell you it doesn't help your relationship. That person lose trust. They can't come to you and talk about things that are hurting them in fear that you might use it against them. So when you say you want to be in a relationship, you really need to think about how much do I have to put out in that relationship? Think about that. Because in the moments when you're fighting, these are the moments that it's hardest to love that person. When you marry someone, when you have children, you are responsible for their well-being, their physical health, their emotional health, their spiritual health. It's a partnership you enter in with God to pray for their physical health, emotional health, spiritual health. You are signing up for all that. Yes, you are responsible to help that person heal. Heal the pain that they grew up with. You are responsible. You are a working party in your children's life. To make sure they're not broken. Some people does it better than others. But this is what you're signing up for. That's what you're signing up for. Black love is no joke. Because you, you have you have a, a black man that the world calls a nigger. Degrading. And then they come home, they angry, and then you turn around, you're angry because they angry, so we have a whole world of angriness going around, and the children feel the tension, and everybody's broken, everybody's mad, everybody's traumatized. There's a lot. If I had known today what I knew, if I had known then what I knew today, there's a lot of things I would have done differently with my children, with my loved ones, my sisters, one sister in particular. Everybody needs to be loved. Everybody needs healing. 
while you hurting because you feel abandoned this one is hurting they they, they didn't have they, they had both parents in the house something in their parents triggered something and then all i'm hurt oh you were here but you were always working you're never there you weren't there so the same abandonment feeling that I'm having because I, I, I didn't I wasn't raised with my mother and father in a household like a normal um, household the one with in the household with the mother and father still has the same feeling because their parents wasn't there they were working so hard to provide for them so it's them if we do them if we don't we don't have any control over those feelings we don't have any control over how we come to this world what we have control over is how we are going to move forward in love. There was a time where I would pop up in a heartbeat when somebody does something wrong for me, with, to me. Now I have the patience to look at you. The God in me doesn't allow me to do these things anymore. I realize hurt people hurt people. So when somebody is popping up at you, it's not about you, really. Most of the time, it's not what you say or did or that triggers it. That, that makes the person pop up like that. But it's something about you that triggers the hurt in them. That's why they're out to hurt you. Do not take it personal. Don't take it personal. Treat people with love. You don't know what these people are going through. You have no idea what they're going through. Now I see people start talking about trauma. Everybody's talking about the trauma in our lives. But what triggers trauma? They start by talking about um, people from the army. If they hear a big boom, there was a guy that um, came from the army, went out with his wife. It was the 4th of July, having a good time, walking in a park, waiting for the fireworks. The fireworks threw him into a fit. Nobody could hold on to him because automatically he heard the first boom. It triggers when he went to war and how everybody else was coming. Um, like it was gunshot all around him. He's looking for his gun. He's freaking out. So this is, these are the things that are happening and people are looking at them. The person that was a loving husband turned into this soldier who's ready to kill in a second. In a second. It takes love to heal these things. Black love especially, I am encouraging you guys, do not fight tit for tat. If it say something wrong, don't say something worse. Try to bring love into your fight. We have to disagree with each other. We are human. We're not supposed to agree on every level. But remember, even when you're fighting, you need to fight with love. There's a picture out there um, where two old people sitting on a bench and it started raining um, they were so mad at each other, they all take a, one end. And then the husband pulled the umbrella and put it over the wife while he's getting wet. That's a beautiful picture of pure love. And I showed it to my husband. I said, this is you when I'm mad at you. <laughs> you still care for the person you love, even when you're mad. That's love. Our community needs love. Black love, it's a beautiful love because it's so fragile. It is so, 
It's a beautiful love when you have two black people falling in love with each other, knowing how broken we could be, knowing how angry, how the hurt in us, nobody took the time to heal it. Nobody wants to hear it. They don't want to hear about it. Go sit down somewhere. Forever crying and complaining. This is what I bought for you today. Black love, take care of each other. Take care of each other. Take care of our brokenness. Talk to ourselves. Talk to. Let's talk with your with ourselves. Say nice things about you. Learn how. Let the love roll out of your mouth, out of your tongue. Girl, you look good today. Early in the morning. The other day I looked in the mirror, I said, oh, this is the child of God. Look at the crown on my head. I'm a princess. I am a child of God. So when you start with you, you say it with you, to you all the time, it's easier to pass it on to others because you have plenty of practice with you. I love you. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Let's take care of our trauma so that we can have healthier love. Please don't forget to subscribe if this is your first time seeing me. Subscribe, like, and share this video. And I'll see you next time. Have a good week. See you next week.